Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Beyond the Steps. I am the co-founder and CEO of Apollo Performance Wear, Bree Zabrowski, here with my fabulous friend and co-host, Melissa McDaniel Grisham. And we are excited to be back with a brand new conversation for you. We're talking about if you've ever, if you've had somebody in the marching arts that you know has been in the marching arts, you may uh, applaud them from afar, but may not fully understand the depth of these organizations and what they're doing um, for these incredible and talented marching artists. We're talking about what is DCI today um, and how is it promoting health and wellness within the marching arts. And they're doing that in a lot of ways. And we're excited to share with that with you and educate you today. We're learning as well. So we're really excited to have Laura Van Doren and Genevieve Kessler here with us to educate us on this topic. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Beyond the Steps, this is a show we dive into all things affecting performing artists from gender inequity, sex abuse and prevention, racism, nutrition, psychology, and of course, medicine and science. Um, we do this every single Friday. We ask one question and we go into big detail with our guests about resources and education and information and perspective, because when you know better, you do better. So today, again, we're talking about what is DCI and how is it promoting health and wellness within the market? Marching arts community. Melissa, without further ado, why don't you tell everybody who we've got with us today? We are so very excited to have two new guests with us this week. We have Genevieve Geisler. She's the Chief Financial Officer, Chief Operating Officer, and Co-Core Director for the Blue Coats Drum and Bugle Corps, where she has been a driving force in the growth of the Blue Coats Blue Coats, excuse me, organization over the past 20 years. She's a founding member and current chair of the Drum Corps International's In-Step DEI Committee. Geisler holds a Bachelor of Science and Master of Public Health degrees from the University of Michigan and lives in Canton, Ohio with two children and a cat. Laura Van Doren is a nurse practitioner with over 40 years of experience in the areas of emergency medicine and women's health. She began her involvement in Drum Corps International in 1972 as a performer and years later became a parent, volunteer providing health care for Carolina Crown for almost a decade. In 2010, she was asked by Dan Atchison, the former DCI executive director, to chair what is now known as the DCI Marching Arts Safety and Health Initiative, also known as MASH, which is an organization of allied health professionals who volunteer their time and expertise to promote health, wellness, safety, and prevent injury and illness within the drum corps activity. When not busy running MASH, Laura enjoys spending time with her children and grandchildren. Drum Corps is a family activity for, for the Van Durans as her husband and children remain very, very involved. Welcome both of you to Beyond the Steps. Welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Laura, I don't think people fully understand how strenuous marching arts is on the body and what these artistic athletes are going through each season with their bodies. Talk a little bit about the biggest misconceptions that you have seen when it comes to health and wellness for marching arts collectively. Well, I don't think anyone can deny that it is become increasingly athletic over the last few decades. And what the participants are doing now on the field whether it's drum corps national or marching bands is not what they were doing uh you know certainly when i was in high school and even when my kids were in high school and drum corps uh it, the, the 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 just the endurance and the uh moves that they're doing now just require incredible preparation and training and uh I think, you know, as it was evolving, we were seeing more and more injuries and that just really opened our eyes uh, to the need for uh, refocus on uh, safety, health and safety and wellness to make sure that the activity was moving in the right direction because Drum Corps International, above all else, you know, it's, a, it's an organization that provides this ability for these students to participate at this level and they are very committed to uh, health and safety yeah thank you i can i can say firsthand and we were talking a little bit about this ahead of the call is um when we 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 didn't know what we were walking into the first time we did a bands of america event as uh, as apollo um and you know going in there and seeing 
you know, just hearing the rigorous training these athletes are putting in, um, the, the uneven surfaces, they're constantly rehearsing, um, the long hours they're, they're rehearsing, uh, it, it's pretty intense. And the injuries they're dealing with are very similar. You know, Laura, we were talking about our background is, is in dance and very, very similar in terms of what they're experiencing with the injury rates and, um, and really the lack of support available to them right now mm -hmm. um, to accommodate all the movement they're doing. So we're really excited to have this conversation. Um, Genevieve, I want to start with you. So we have DCI, we have MASH, we have INSTEP. So I think it's really important, you know, for, to, for people to understand the differences, what these three things mean. Um, we, we like to lay a foundation at this show. So educate the people out there. What are these three things? And obviously, collectively, their mission is to prioritize health and wellness within the marching arts. But how do they work separately and how do they work in tandem? So DCI is Drum Corps International, and you can think of it sort of like the NBA or NFL. It's an overarching organization of the member groups. Um, so in each individual drum corps, you can think of like a team. Uh, so, you know, the Boston Celtics, LA Lakers, whatever. So each one of those teams um, has a voice and a vote in DCI, Drum Corps International, in, into uh, what we do and uh, how we participate. Um, at the same time, DCI is its own nonprofit organization with a board of directors that's elected uh, by the member core representatives. Um, so that's, you know, that, that sets the framework for our competitive field and all, it also, uh, you know, has the authority and responsibility for setting rules and regulations and standards for the way that we comport ourselves, you know, professionally and, the, you know, in many ways, a whole slew of different things that affect the health and wellness and safety of all of our um, participants, whether, you know, participants, of course, focusing on student um, participants, but really everyone that's involved from the students to the staff, uh, especially as we travel down the road as a group. So um, what MASH and INSTEP are, are committees um, formed by DC committees and sub organizations formed by DCI, uh, by the DCI board and membership in order to focus on specific, um, you know, concerns and topics. There are other committees like, you know, competition or whatever, those type of things um, that have different concerns. Um, but INSTEP is was formed as a DEI committee and MASH was formed to, um, you know, look at issues of member safety, health and wellness. Um, within the organization and then, you know, form recommendations, a group of professionals, all of those types of things. They each have their own kind of mission statement within there, but we all serve the greater organization. So that's kind of how that works. So mm -hmm. both, both committees are, DCI kind of oversees both of those committees and those committees help set the regulation for DCI. Would that be fair to say? I'd say regulations, recommendations, professional expertise, um, a, a network, of, a, a network advisory, all of those things. Yes. Okay. Ultimately, yeah. it's DCI who decides what the regulation, you know, the board of directors or the member groups, depending on the topic, what the regulations are, but yeah. the information and the talking and the expertise comes from within the various committees. Got it. Thank you. That is very helpful, actually. I really appreciate that because it is very confusing to hear all these different names and what do they mean? And I wonder, do, are these pretty um, well known in the marching arts community as far as the members? Do they understand or is this is this going to be helpful for them to hear too? Um, I think... I think it's helpful for everyone and you know it is a bit complicated because each of the member groups like blue coach sure. carolina crown blue devils you know they're each their own independent organization yeah. with their own nonprofit status their own committees their own uh, experts and standards for themselves but we also have to answer to this larger group that you know not only sets regulations though can provide advice and expertise to everyone so i think it does you know get a little confusing for people that don't spend yeah all no of their i time love working on yeah it. I love that we're having the conversation. So what are the primary objectives of Drum Corps International or DCI regarding safety and health of its participants? Obviously, it's a huge priority knowing that they have two committees dedicated to that. Um, but but w what is that goal for DCI? Um, well, I can let Lori speak to how she feels about it in regard to the MASH committee. But I think just generally, you know, over time, you know, each one of the organizations, as well as Drum Corps International itself, has grown from something smaller and less complicated into something bigger and more complicated and potentially more dangerous. And, you know, of course, al along with how society has moved forward in the past 20, 30, et cetera, years. Um, and so while 
a lot of things have in the past been left to each individual organization. I think it became clear over time that, you know, there needed to be at least a, a floor or a platform of standards, regulations, um, you know, yeah. for health and wellness and DEI type participant safety topics that came down from the uh from the overall organization that each group can't do just exactly what they want or not that anyone was doing anything wrong per se or on purpose, but that there's a lot of advice, a lot of information from experts that's available to be shared that each group doesn't have to reinvent on their own. So I think it, it comes from that. Um, and the, everyone's desire to, you know, while we all might have our own loyalties or, or organizations that we work for, you know, that when it comes down to the safety of students and young people, there's nothing that you know there's nothing that's not worth sharing with everyone else if you have an expertise available and when you say dei can you tell me what you're referring to with those that well, sure so diversity equity and inclusion which you know instep was started several years ago as a committee focusing on uh issues of you know empowering women participants in dci but over time uh, it became a all-encompassing uh, like D, you know DEI committee that focused on issues diversity equity inclusion that's not specifically focused on women anymore but for all groups love it that's that's the catalyst for this show and beyond the steps so we love that mm -hmm. um Laura what what was the catalyst to creating mesh and instep and how have you seen the industry change because of those things uh so because we are such a unique activity, uh, you know, if you go and ask most people, have they heard of a drum and bugle corps? I mean, perhaps nowadays you might get a yes answer, but you know, a lot of people don't know what drum corps is. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, when as this became increasingly athletic, uh, we realized that uh, we were seeing more and more injuries and more and more things that need to be addressed from a from a health and safety perspective and so back in 2007 a group of uh, healthcare professionals associated with a drum and bugle corps called the cavaliers drum and bugle corps from the chicago uh, area developed a started the uh organization organization which at the time was known as the drum corps medical project mm. And it grew out of, as I said, the Cavaliers Medical Group. And then in 2010, uh, when I was working with the Carolina Crown Drum and Bugle Corps as their medical advisor and parent volunteer, um, one of our uh, members had a pretty um, striking injury, a tibial plateau fracture. And you just don't see that kind of thing happening from a stress fracture in um, or you didn't used to see that in the marching arts at all. That was something that you saw more in other, you know, recognized sports. And so that was the catalyst for DCI to take this to the next level was because they were seeing all these injuries and because most of the volunteer, the volunteer healthcare professionals within these organizations were more medically trained as opposed to sports medicine trained. Mm -hmm. And so that became the catalyst for us to realize that we actually needed people trained in sports medicine, such as athletic trainers, because mm -hmm. this was an athletic activity and we needed to recognize it as such. And so in 2011, well, I guess was my first year to chair what is now known as MASH. Again, it was called the Drum Corps Medical Project. And uh, since then, uh, we have seen that almost every organization has, besides just having medical professionals, and I'm not saying we don't need nurses and physicians and all of those people, most organizations have on staff or have access to athletic trainers and physical therapists because that, you know, those are the kind of injuries that you know, we're seeing that we had to address that were not being addressed sufficiently and you know the organization was just you know taking off in an athletic direction and we were just running behind it and now hopefully we're running uh <laughs> not at the same pace a, a bit ahead and i'll give you one example um we um and you were talking about the difference between individual cores and and the overarching organization called drum corps international 
you know, I don't think anyone at this point can deny that climate change is happening and, and we have seen how it's affected our activity. And so as an organization and under the guidance from our organization, uh, Drum Corps International took on this year as one of its projects, how to best uh, uh, address climate change to make sure that we are moving in a safe direction um, mm -hmm. from all aspects, from rehearsal and performance standpoints, from event safety standpoints, uh, or perspective, I should say, um, to make sure that we are recognizing climate change and managing it appropriately within the organization. Right. Like it's things like that people don't think about, like those adjustments have to be made to keep everybody safe. Um, I have a follow up question to, to all of this, because as you talk about this, you know, listening to what Genevieve said, listening to what you're saying, Laura, about the development of, OK, we recognize that there was a need. And so we developed this and now people are bought in and they are like, yay, we really we really, you know, want this, you know, think coming from the dance world. And as much as Bree and I talk about, oh, we need some regulation. Oh, we need, you know. How, are, is everybody really bought, brought, bought in? Has DCI always been there? And it's just kind of been like the thing, like everybody looks to DCI and they follow these regulations. Are there consequences for not following the regulations? How, how do you get, every, because I would love to see a DCI-ish of dance. And then there are member organizations and they're bought in and they're they have voting power and there's committees and there. I would love to see that, but I can totally see all the pushback happening if we were to try to establish something like that. Is there pushback? Are there consequences if you don't follow these regulations? And what are they? That might be for Genevieve, maybe probably. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I would say that as we, as you know, as we've developed any standards, like in any organization, I, I want, you know, I don't know if pushback is exactly the right word, but there's certainly reticence or unawareness on the part of people, especially if, you know, if they're like anything else, they've been doing something the same way for a long time. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people don't necessarily, aren't necessarily super open to change. I do think that we're fortunate that we work in a space where people are generally progressive and I don't necessarily mean that in a political sense per se I just mean that they're you know you're working around the arts you're working around young people you're pretty familiar with the issues that are being faced in those segments of you know in society or surrounding those things so you know I think that in in some ways you know we're lucky that that that's the case but it would be false to say that there was no you know reticence to follow along with some of these ideas or to understand the need for some of these ideas um but I, you know, and I, and both of these, you know, MASH and STEP, a lot of it was born out of the fact that there was an, uh, you know, sort of the um, safety steps or participant protection steps were applied unevenly across the member organizations. And the idea is to have them be applied more evenly, even if they're individualized to the groups, you know, have at least, you know, some, and not just as rules, but also just as information sharing, something you may never, you know, not everyone has, no, is an expert in everything, especially when you're coming from like perhaps a musical or marching band background. So I hate to put it in punitive terms, but a lot of it's just like, oh, I never heard of that. I didn't know we should have an athletic trainer instead of a nurse or not, not instead, but you know, that they would have a specific expertise that's perfect for this. You know, maybe I didn't know that until Laura, Laura and her committee told us that, but once we are aware and understand the benefits of it, you know, you can start to apply those things. So, um, the same might be said for some of the things with the participant safety, like whistleblower uh, protocols, safe sport, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, you know, not always pushback, but just understanding the why and how, or even hearing of it in order to implement it, you know? So are there consequences? I mean, there have been, you know, everyone, first of all, in order to participate, all the groups have to submit the, you know, a specific set Got of it. policies and guidelines in order, before you even go on the road each year, that has to be done. Hmm. I don't know that there's anyone who doesn't do it, but that's checked by DCI. Um, have there been groups that participant safety wise have been, you know, come under scrutiny and some type of process? Yes, that has happened before. So, um, and I think, you know, 
we all have the collective sense that anything that happens to one group is a negative for all of us because it's a small system and, you know, it's a small community and ecosystem. So I think that's a part of it too. You know, we know we have to all work together um, to make sure people are, you know, protected at every group at every level. Um, so I think there's, you know, I, I would like to think of it's more of a collaborative sense of moving forward rather than punitive. Think, but yes, there can be consequences. Yeah. I think that's the missing piece, Melissa. That's <laughs> it right there. <laughs> We might, Genevieve, you might have just helped us uncover the lost treasure. <laughs> yes, so the, the answer um, is needed for all this yeah, time. It's a great model. It's a great model. Yeah. If I can add to that, I think, you know, yes, we do get a little bit of pushback, especially from the people who are involved in the design element of uh, the activity. And however, I will say fast forward to where we are now, and they have seen that if they pay attention to these recommendations that various groups are making, they see less injuries, they have less kids sitting out, that it actually works to their favor in the end. And so, um, I, you know, I would say, you know, yes, we got pushed back uh, because again, as Genevieve said, the, the old uh, term, you know, that's the way we've always done it. Um, was uh, very much, you know, the response that we got way back then. And now I would say that we have, you know, much better buy-in and people know who we are and they understand that when we make recommendations, we're making them because it's going to keep their kids safe and participating and they won't have a bunch of kids sitting out or injured. Um, and I've mm -hmm. seen... Uh, you know, now, um, as I said, almost every group has an athletic trainer or access to someone in sports medicine, and that just was not a thing a decade ago. Uh, and and we've moved kind of in the same direction with regards to mental health um, and our performers uh, in that, you know, what we asked of them regarding the athletics, uh, the athleticism years ago, um, we have asked of them also with regards to mental health. And I would say... Um, you know, all, all the organizations are, are taking that very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a total side note, how many organizations are in DCI? Well, you know, so we, I've talked about how it was set up with the member organizations, as, you know, like with the example of like the NBA and the teams. So that doesn't actually paint the entire picture. So the member groups that have a voting power, there's approximately 20. It fluctuates at times, but there's approximately 20. But then there are a whole bunch of other organizations um, that also <laughs> are kind of governed by DCI and um, participate in the events at different levels, but they're not... Um, they're oh, smaller yeah. groups that have their own circuits, this type of thing. You could like almost think of it like as our, like mine, I, I hate to use the word minor, but just saying like minor league bases, baseball versus major. They might not be the voting teams, but they're still uh, involved in the process. They still compete and they still are subject to a lot of the, the uh, you know, the regulations and recommendations. So we have open class and sound sport and, you know, different things like that. So there's another... I don't know, 40, 50, 60 groups that are part of that as well. You know, some, and it's everything from somebody who might participate in one or two events a year to groups that are, um, you know, just as big almost as some of the member groups, but they maybe haven't been around as long. Um, and, and, you know, they're, but they're kind of doing a similar thing where they travel around the United States for several weeks each mm -hmm. summer. So there's different groups like that. But regardless, you know, a lot of the, um, things that have come out of the MASH committee, for instance, in regard to making sure you always have a certified medical professional with you at all times, um, and some of the things regarding heat, lightning, sound protection, etc. All of those groups are subject to those types of standards. Thank you. Uh, if you can't tell and you're just tuning in, my wheels are turning, yeah. <laughs> turning, 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 turning. Um, but you are watching Beyond the Steps. If you are just now tuning in, we are talking to um, Laura Van Doren and um, Genevieve Geisler about what is DCI and how is it promoting health and marching arts? Um, it is not too late to join this conversation. Please drop your questions and comments in the chat. Share, like, um, to call somebody, tell them that it's time to watch this episode because we are learning a lot and we are learning a lot across disciplines and industries. 
because I don't march at all, but I am learning so much that I can apply to the dance world that I just don't even know what to do with myself. Um, so please make sure that you watch the rest of this episode and let somebody else know if you want to go watch it from the beginning. You can catch the entire thing on YouTube at TP Dance Creations or at Apollo Performance. Um, Laura, what role does nutrition and hydration play in DCA's, DCI's health and wellness initiatives? Um, that's a great question. Uh, you know, we have struggled for a few years early on just getting nutritionists to become part of our group uh, because we just were not finding uh, those individuals who were involved in the marching arts because you really need to understand um, the nature of the beast in terms of our activity. It is so unique. It is somewhat like, it is, or I should say it has evolved somewhat like a touring Broadway show except that it's done outdoors in the heat <laughs> and <laughs> the accommodations are not what you would find for a Broadway tour. That's right. for sure. Um, so that said, we were lucky to uh, pair up with a, uh, a nutritionist by the name of Lisa Dorfman a couple of years ago, just pre COVID uh, who uh, is a nutritionist and um, you know, and I, I should remember this, but she was involved in, I think the U S I could be wrong on this, but the U S uh, sailing Olympic team, I think that's a thing. Uh, but anyway, so she had an athletic background, uh, and also a nutritionist and she developed a, uh, culinary, culinary performance guide. I think it was like over 70 pages that it ended up being in just what was important in terms of nutrition and hydration. Uh, with regards to these marching arts athletes uh, and how best to feed them and how best to hydrate them. Uh, and in addition to that, we have taken that a step further in terms of climate change and made some specific recommendations just this year with regards to specifically to hydration based on uh, measuring the climate, which we no longer measure just in terms of putting a thermometer out there. We have all kinds of measurement devices. One is called a Kestrel, which is a wet bulb globe thermometer, which takes into account other factors besides just uh, the temperature um, and uh, field surface temperature. And from those measurements, we make specific uh, rehearsal and hydration recommendations. Uh, so uh, we've certainly evolved quite a bit. This uh, is because most of everything they do is outside, correct? Like they're practicing outside, they're performing outside. I mean, everything is outside because these groups are so massively huge. Right. Yes. It's all outdoors and it's often, you know, we travel around the United States. So you're going yep. down to yep. the Southern United States in the middle of summer, of course. So this is during summer break of school. So it gets extremely hot and hotter. Do the guidelines year, so. change per region? Because obviously the climate um, is different. You I mean, know, Lori would know for sure, but I, I, I don't, not really per region, but there's guidelines based on specific wet bulb globe, yeah. wet bulb globe, like temperatures and or readings essentially that you're supposed to follow you know and there's similar things for air quality that have come out now too like remember like from last year if you remember there were all those wildfires in canada so things we're not very accustomed to at all that they're only accustomed to dealing with on the west coast we had to deal with even like where my group's located in ohio last year that was a totally new thing again but thankfully you know they also they on the mash committee they have professionals that include as meteorologists as well as uh, other types of health professionals to, so you know they were able to guide us with what to do uh, for hot bad air quality ratings and that kind of thing so it even gets that specific that's fantastic those are the type of issues that we have to deal with essentially yeah I mean it's yeah. not fantastic that you're dealing with those issues but it's fantastic <laughs> that you have well, people that are yeah. aware and providing guidance on those things I think it's wonderful. Well and you're just thinking like master case like doctors or nurses or nurse practitioners oh. whatever but it's like a whole it runs the gamut of things and think of the issues we've had to deal with just in the last 5 years from covid and covid vaccination and protocols surrounding that so public health to the types of things Lori just talked about with the heat and increasing heat issues with climate change, um, the air quality thing that I just mentioned, um, and also just in, uh, in increased incidence of severe weather events. That's another thing that the meteorologists help us with as well. So all of those things are kind of, I've been, you know, 
both of us have been doing this for kind of a long time, but like those are kind of new emerging issues uh, that we fortunately are, have access to a lot of experts who have uh, experience with. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you're just joining, uh, I'm Brie with Apollo, Melissa McDaniel Grisham. This is Beyond the Steps. We do this every Friday. Today we're talking about Genevieve guys uh, talking to Genevieve Geisler and Laura Van Doren um, from Marching Arts Safety and Health and Instep under uh, Drum Corps International or DCI, and we're talking about what is DCI and how is it promoting health and health and wellness within the marching arts community. Um, Genevieve. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, give us a follow. Make sure to go back and watch this from the beginning on YouTube at Apollo Performance and TP Dance Creations. It is a good one. Be sure to listen, educate yourself on this incredible sport. It is, there's lots to learn. So Genevieve, how are injuries and medical emergencies handled during DCI events and competitions? Um, well, there's two aspects to that. So I won't say just during events and competitions, but really the vast majority of all that occurs mm -hmm. during rehearsal you know because we rehearse up to like 12 hours a day yeah. so it's a long you know it's a long slog and it's also a lot of you know there's one side is emergencies you know and the other side is uh illnesses and you know um injuries that occur because yeah. of repeat you know overuse injuries essentially you know so there's there's several different aspects of how that is handled and um you know we've always had different types of medical people working with the different groups and all of that. But because of Lori's committee, MASH, we now have standards in place where someone is required by DCI to be with you at all times. And they recommend that at least one of those people is an athletic trainer, like she was talking about before. So they're really the point person for handling all of those things um, because they have a lot of experience with both, you know, the overuse type injury type of thing, but also emergency issues as well as basic kind of health um, medical, like, you know, illnesses type stuff as well. So, I mean, she so would have more specific, so I don't love that, but. Yeah, yeah. So the individual organizations have an athletic trainer on site for practices. Does that athletic trainer have to be, uh, I guess, vetted by, by MASH or is it? Oh, uh, well, they're, so they have to have their certification and we, whether it's a athletic trainer, nurse, doctor, whatever. I mean, you have to have their specific certifications that you have to have you know you have to be a licensed athletic trainer you know and you have to be a just like you have to have your you know be a license to practice in the state where you are as a physician you know but or then at the, at the competitive performance level then when they do the shows and the competitions and things like that does dci have its own staff on hand and then those those teams bring their staff as or their their people their representatives as well or is at that point when it's performance and competition environment dci kind of takes over and says we've got this um, well from my perspective as a core director it's very much like the nba you know you have a team doctor and you have athletic okay. trainers that are yours that travel with you the, my people are on the sideline they have an emergency kit they're ready to handle uh -huh. emergencies they're deal, you know they're working with people on their injuries throughout the day and up to the competition it's very much like that scenario now are there additional emergency personnel there um, like ambulances that type of thing yes yeah, just like you would have at a sporting event and there may be people from you know mash that are available to consult on things at various events as well so i mean maybe Lori could speak some more to that but that's how it works from my perspective as a core director you have your people and they're traveling with you so they're with you all day at practice and then they come to the show and you know they're on the sideline just like you would be at a basketball game got it got it laura anything to add to all of that um yeah no i mean think i think that's a pretty good analogy um the only thing i would say is uh you know Yes, as she mentioned with the uh, meteorologist, we are very fortunate to have uh, a group of people with varied backgrounds and expertise. And because drum corps is, again, such a unique activity, when we have things that are maybe a bit less non-emergent, like not life-threatening, but other issues going on, um, the health and wellness teams that each drum corps has, be it an athletic trainer, nurse, or whoever they have traveling with them, when they encounter a situation that uh, requires an understanding of our activity in order to make the plan 
uh, for that member make sense within the activity, that is often where they will consult members from our volunteer organization specifically with regards to whatever's going on in that member. Because, and I'll give you an example. So when you have a member who has some kind of a strain or a sprain type injury uh, or some kind of musculoskeletal injury or even a medical problem, and they, they go to an ER, but the emergency physician doesn't understand what we're doing and how we're traveling. And mm -hmm. so they often will make recommendations that just don't really fit the situation. Right. And we're so, very aware. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we are able then to sort of morph those recommendations into what will make sense for that member. Uh, and if we can do that, you know, and have the member remain on tour, then we make those recommendations. And sometimes it's actually a decision where the member needs to go home and see a physical therapist and have actual, you know, sure. physical therapy or whatever the issue is um, to get better before they can come back. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we understand the activity where there is a resource for uh, those health and wellness teams if they just can't really make the, the medical issue fit the situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So, uh, Genevieve, in maintaining and enforcing the guidelines and recommendations, how do you get around budget or or maybe this isn't this isn't an issue you know we're thinking about it from our perspective but how do you get around budgetary concerns for each organization like i would imagine that there is a budgetary concern of carrying around this apparatus and having it and having these trainers and, and medical professionals like how do you help them get navigate that yeah because i mean um, let's be honest when you implement these things and you're like okay now we're gonna set this guideline and you guys are gonna worry about i mean you have to hear a collective groan across the country Country going, oh, now we have to find the money to do this. And how are we going to do this? Like, there's got to be some pushback, I would say. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because that's certainly, you know, a concern. Uh, Lori's laughing because budget, you know, this is as much as I've made analogies to like the NBA. I mean, this is not <laughs> professional <laughs> sports, you know, the budgets are not um, anywhere yeah. near that. And while they're a lot more than they used to be, they're still, you know, extremely low considering what the type of events and performances that we're able sure. to pull off. And Which I also think it's if, if you haven't seen a show, go see. I mean, it will blow your mind. That's all. I'm gonna and say. I think it's also important to note that, you know, also unlike professional sports, you know, there's a huge variation in wealth of, or the amount of resources that each of the individual groups has, even amongst the member core, the 20 member cores. And when you're, you know, like I talked about the sound sport, you know, that might only do one or two events versus, you know, somebody that's, you know, uh, you know, people that are traveling all around the country or are doing several events, you know, there's a huge range of budgets. And I, that definitely was a concern when we started uh, hearing and talking about the standard of having specific certified professionals with you at all times. Um, so yes, that's a, a concern. Uh, in the, but, you know, I think that collectively, number one, people have realized, and I think I hope we have all realized now that in the end, you know, if you want to just talk about it dollars and cents, I mean, obviously it's the right thing to do. It's right for the participants, but in the end, you know, the risk of having someone be grievously harmed is also extraordinarily financially risky for our entire business model. So that is one consideration. Um, in addition, DCI has been able to provide some, you know, granting, you know, through through funding that they've received, like some granting resources, for instance, to help you purchase one of uh, the wet globe thermometer things she was talking about, because those are kind of expensive. Or there were some grants that became available a couple of years ago that to give, you know, give each group but several thousand dollars to help pay for an athletic trainer, for instance, or purchasing an AED or these kind of um, equipment. Um, and, you know, you just have to allocate your resources in that way, obviously, and make it a priority. It's like anything else, um, you know, you have to decide what's most important and you have to hopefully make those one of your priorities. I would also say we also, because we are nonprofit organizations and because DCI is a nonprofit organization, we're very fortunate to be able to rely on um, a lot of people who are either volunteers or volunteering their professional advice and expertise or who are 
extremely into marching band or drum corps in some way that allows them to see fit to participate that's at a financial compensation level that might not be quite equivalent with their uh, actual, you know, ability to make money in background. Just like many of us, you know, we do, you're doing something because you love it. It's not necessarily the highest paid job that you personally could possibly get, you know, so all of those aspects, you know, are involved in it. And a lot of the people on, you know, while I, at least from my perspective, from the blue coats, you know, all the people that work with us day to day, the athletic trainers that are hired to travel around with us, those people are all, you know, paid. Um, a lot of the experts that you're able to consult are volunteers or, you know, and ma- that make themselves available uh, to us because they care and because you know they're giving back to students and the uh, an activity they oftentimes love and we also have the added resource of people's parents um or people that are parents of students who were in drum corps at least at one time um that are you know out of 165 students every year someone's parents are going to be medical professionals so we have that you know uh, added resource as well um so Definitely a concern, but we have various ways of a sort of ameliorating it, I guess, that kind of vary across the thing. But yeah, you got to devote some resources to to it, especially if you want to hire athletic trainers to travel with you. I mean, that's reality. Right. Absolutely. You that know, makes total it, sense. If I can just add to that a little bit, um, you know, I have said several times, this is a unique activity, but this is an activity that literally changes lives. And so a lot of people, you know, the life lessons that you learn from being in this activity are pretty remarkable. Uh, And, you know, what you see, what you see at a performance, if you could just see what goes on behind the scenes in terms of teaching young adults about just being responsible and accountable uh, and, and accomplishing something far greater than they ever thought they could, those participants take those life lessons and they go and they live their lives and they get their degrees or whatever they choose to do. And oftentimes we are very fortunate in that they'll come back to the activity and want to give back. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's why I have this group of amazing healthcare professionals who literally volunteer their time at a, at a medical liability to themselves Mm -hmm. um, who are willing to, help this organization move forward. Mm, yeah. And I would, I would say too, maybe it would be instructive to just say like, at least, I mean, I don't know exactly what every group does, obviously. And Lori might know more about that, but I can tell you exactly like how we handle it, like at Blue Coats, right? So we have at all times with us, we have two ATC certified athletic trainers. Um, and then during our spring training, which is when we're not moving, we have several, um, uh like athletic training interns that are working on their degree and they have to do an internship as part Mm -hmm. of their degree process and the preceptors are our certified athletic trainers which not only helps more people learn about athletic training in the in the like marching arts um you know field but also can help provide us has helped provide us with a pipeline of future certified athletic trainers once they finish their school who already know about drum corps and like it so we have that with us all the time. We also have a team physician that, you know, does clearances and things with them. He's a blue coat alum. He's paid a pittance, you know, but he's very interested in helping out. He works primarily remotely, but, um, you know, he's, he cares about drum corps and blue coats and he's willing to provide that service to us. We, we also have, um, it's not just two athletic trainers total on our team though, because usually people can't come for 12 weeks at once. Right. So we have like five or six different people that are rotating in and out. Um, Mm -hmm. We also have uh, two volunteer uh, licensed counselor therapists that are primarily remote, but they're available to Mm -hmm. students via Slack, email and phone pretty much at all times. And then we also have a social worker who who comes with us to spring training and is a paid professional that's available to students at uh, all times when he's not there as well via, you know, um, Slack and um, email, et cetera. So, you know, we have, we kind of use that framework and then all of those people are also, especially the athletic training, they're, they're also able to consult the other experts as we are as the directors that are available through Lori's committee. Mm, wow. That is that is phenomenal. I hope there are 
people out there listening with their listening ears about <laughs> the format there and how and how and how it can actually work. Uh, if you are just now tuning in, we are finishing up an amazing show uh, with Laura Van Doren and Genevieve Geisler. And you need to watch this episode from the beginning because we're talking about what is DCI and how it's promoting health um, in marching arts. So please, please, please watch this from the beginning. Go to YouTube or Facebook at Apollo Performance or at TP Dance Creations and start it from the beginning. Please share, please tag someone, please subscribe so you know when we have new episodes like this as well. Um, so it is time for homework. Uh, Bree, you want to go forward? Yeah. So Genevieve and Laura, you guys are new to the show. We give our get our listeners homework every single week, something they can do to uh, improve or shed light in their life on the topic we talked about today between now and the next episode next week. So uh, I'll start with you, Laura. What is your homework assignment for our audience? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Genevieve, do you have one? Laura, we can come back. Oh, no, Laura, Laura can go first. That's, that's <laughs> Thanks, <Jenny. laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, in terms of... Anything uh, they can do to be more educated on any of this. Sure, sure. Well, uh, you can go to a performance this summer. If you go to uh, dci.org, you will find uh, a list of all of the uh, performances all over the country. And uh, you can also just read about what is drum corps and uh, watch some of the videos and YouTubes. Uh, you know, you'll see the performances, but if you can find some videos on what happens behind the scenes, uh, it's really pretty amazing. You know, I always say uh, my daughter is a, a musical theater actress. And so, uh, I, you know, she would often tell me it's way more interesting to see what happens behind the curtain than in front of it. Sure. And I think the same thing exists with, uh, with the drum bugle corps activity in that, the, you know, what goes on behind the scenes is fascinating, but just educating yourself on what happens within our organization. And I think that, you know, we, we try to set the standard for the marching arts. So just, you know, seeing what the high school marching bands are doing these days. I live in Texas now, and I am just completely blown yeah. away by what they're able to accomplish in the short amount of time that they get to rehearse, uh, just even within their organization. I think that's a great assignment. Genevieve, what about you? Um, I would say, you know, check out, after you check out a show, or, you know, the types of the things that Lori was talking about, you know, maybe go to dci.org, go to individual core website and check out all the things we actually are doing. You know, a lot of times people think, oh, they're not taking care of this. Oh, you know, what about this? What about that? But the reality is a lot of people have spent a lot of time that's over and, you know, like Lori, like all the experts on the match committee, uh, a lot of people have spent a lot of time, often uncompensated because of their love of this activity to really create an extreme, a much safer environment in all aspects um for our participants you know and you can find out a lot about that on dci.org and you know bluecoats.com whatever other drum cord you know dot com they're going to have a dash safety page or uh, dei information on there about the things that we've been doing um, by using safe sport by having whistleblower um, compliance uh, and hiring um you know policies by incorporating the mash recommendations into our own policies at dci and within the individual groups there's a lot of work that's already been done so i'd encourage people to look and you know take a look at all of that and also if you if you are an expert or if you're not find a way to you know help out you know whether it's a small group or a large group you know offer expertise cook a meal one day there's all types of volunteer opportunities available oh, and that's a really idea. great way to see that's a really great way to see like the behind the scenes that Lori was talking about that it's not you know sure you can go watch everyone perform but how you know the amazing uh level of collaboration um and organization that it takes to put each one of those performances out there the only way to really find out about that is to get behind the scenes and a great way to do that is volunteering 
It's a big machine. It takes a lot to make it go. It takes a lot of hands. It takes a village. So, um, you know, we appreciate everything you guys are doing. And, and, you know, just this was fantastic to learn about. I think there's a lot to, to take from you all and what you're doing. Um, we also have our own homework that we do every week here. It was the catalyst for the show. It's a Take Our Steps initiative course. It is completely free. It is a five-part course series. Every module was generated by an expert in their field. You're going to get educated and resources on racism, racism, gender inequity, sex abuse prevention, nutrition psychology, and dance medicine and science. You can go at your own pace, but to set your foundation, take this course. Again, you can go at your own pace and it's absolutely free. Yes, free. Take it now. It's available uh, at the link. Uh, click the link that Melissa just put up there. And I'm also, I don't do this every show, Melissa. You can testify that I do not do this every show, but I'm going to do it today because I think it's relevant and important. Uh, get your Apollo socks. Apollo socks are a proud partner. We are endorsed by DCI and the recommended socks of DCI. Uh, we are a compression sock that is lifting and stabilizing the arch ankle and providing energy absorption padding, proven to reduce force of impact. We're removing the inflammation that causes aches, pain, and swelling, and injury due to overuse. Um, and we're improving circulation to help the body recover faster. So you can do more of what you love and we want to keep feet on the field. We are, uh, we have a couple really big sponsorships that we're excited to share coming up, but you need to get these socks and wear them as much as you can for practice performance and recovery. We guarantee our products. They're supported by the APMA and we have independent studies backing up what I'm saying right now. So check them out. You can't lose, um, but get them at apollaperformance.com. So um, both of you, Genevieve and Laura, how can people get a hold of you or what's the best way if people have questions about DCI, about MASH, about InStep, how can they get a hold of both of you? Well, for me, if you go to bluecoats.com, all my contact information is easily found. So, uh, you know, I'm happy to, I'm sure that Laura, Lori does too. We spend a lot of our time just, you know, talking about our, um, the things that we care about and trying to spread them across the marching arts activities. So, you know, I'm happy for anyone to reach out to me anytime. Easy to find out. Thank you. Laura, you, do you want to share anything? Um, well, I will put a shameless plug in for our organization. If you love the marching arts, even if you don't know what drum corps is and you're a healthcare professional, a, a licensed ally healthcare professional, and you want to get involved in our organization in some way, uh, you can just go to dci.org forward slash health, and it will take you to a, uh, a form that you can complete and you can uh, inquire more about what, who we are and what we have. Uh, and just in terms of your interest in Drum Corps International, uh, I can be reached uh, through DCI uh, at lvandoren at dci.org, and anyone can directly email me if they want. Thank you both so much for everything you're doing for the marching arts community, but also for taking your time and being here today to educate us and shed some light on all the work that's being done um, in within DCI and, and for the marching arts world. Uh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. Congratulations on all the success and we're cheering for you. We, we can't wait to see what you all do coming up. Uh, we know you have probably lost the work for being here. Yes, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you everyone who joined us today for this amazing episode. Thank you to our two excellent guests and thank you to Bree for being here as an amazing co-host. I definitely appreciate you as we start to bring season four to a close. It is very, very hard to believe. Um, if you did not catch this episode from the beginning, please make sure you go to YouTube at Apollo Performance or at TP Dance Creations and catch the entire thing and make sure you share it with somebody. We will be back next week, 3.30 Eastern with another fantastic episode and we hope to see you there. Until then, make sure you continue your journey beyond the stage. See you next week. Bye, everybody.